Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the curse tree. His body bound and drenched in tears.
Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to our online service this morning. We are just happy to uh, just be here together and with you, and hopefully that uh, this morning, um, as you tune in, God just touches you where you're at, and we're just believing for that. We are happy to welcome Eva with us this morning. Normally, she is on the online chat um, feed there on, Inst- on, on the YouTube, just chatting it up with the folks, but... Uh, Today she's worshiping along with us, so we're just super pumped to have her today. And uh, amen. And higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave And constant in the trials and the change This one thing remains This one thing remains Your love never fails, never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me one thing remains 
never runs out on me and your love never fails it never runs out on me your love oh in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Death, life, in death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power. Death is pain. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're just thankful again to just be with you in your home as if you were worshiping with us uh, live. We just welcome you, and, and if you're catching this at any time, we just know that God is able to just um, touch you where you're at. And uh, this morning, if you have any prayer requests, please send them through to our prayer email, which is prayer at cbfellowship.ca. And um, weekly, we have people who pray for those things, um, and just we're believing for you and with you for the things that you have need of in the kingdom of God. We know that God is able to meet every need, and there's nothing that he cannot do. And there's nothing that he cannot change. And so we're just believing for you. So, amen. I rest my soul on Jesus When the mountain shakes I put my trust in Jesus Vision being 
Jesus. When breath grows still and night draws near, oh, I will. going to welcome this morning Pastor Kevin as he comes to share the word and we just bless him this morning that the the words that the Lord puts on his heart would just transform uh, your heart and your lives uh, by this the, the anointing of the spirit so amen welcome pastor amen praise the Lord I pray that the uh, in, in we talk about worship and the, the worship team um Worship is intended to bring praise to God. That's what they were just singing. And uh, all worship. The Bible says that uh, let every breath and all that hath breath bring praise to the Lord. And I was thinking how that uh, sometimes we feel that we can't sing, but it doesn't mean we can't praise. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And so praise is separate from singing. Sometimes we have... You know, this morning, real good singing and real good voices. Nice to have Eva there. Uh, and uh, helping out with the, with the worship. Uh, but it's not a matter of just singing. Uh, it's, it's a matter of what we do brings praise to our God. And uh, that's, that's the whole point. And uh, 
So uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, being on the, taking the time to be with us today. Uh, time is uh, valuable for all of us, and uh, great to have you here. I do feel I have a, a, a prophetic word uh, from God uh, to share with you, and uh, I wanted to reflect on the fact that uh, the last few weeks we have mentioned about new cameras and new equipment, and uh, the good news is is that money has come in and cameras are ordered and. I was notified this morning that the cameras are shipped and coming to us, the equipment will be here, and uh, we're hoping that that will uh, enhance everything that we're doing. And so I want to thank everybody that gave, uh, and so I know some people said that they were still going to give, so uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, office at cbfellowship.ca for anyone that wants to give, and give to that cause or just give to the ministry. Uh, we appreciate everything that comes in, because We've discovered that uh, our own congregation is good at giving, but uh, I noticed in for the cameras that we did receive gifts, financial support uh, from other places, places that uh, are where the ministry goes, uh, people have a heart to give. And so we want to thank you for that, and uh, uh, we'll uh, look at uh, what I wanted to share today. I wanted to... Uh, talk to you for a few minutes on the whole idea that uh, change, talk about change, uh, change is always happening uh, to all of us, and uh, the, the, the story of life is one that changes. Uh, when you're born, we could uh, see you as a baby, and then, you know, within a few months, we'll say, oh my, how you have changed. Uh, since the last time I saw you. And in school, we change from grade to grade, and then uh, we change jobs. Sometimes we change friends. Sometimes we change houses or locations, and sometimes we move. We have a lot of international students. And for sure, they've, they've experienced change in, in, in life. And the truth is, is that we all, all of us, have change. And sometimes we pray for change. Sometimes it just happens. But there's other times when we pray, oh, God, help us. Something needs to change. And uh, I believe that we hope, our hope is, is that when we change, we will become better. Uh, we will become more mature. That we will become uh, better at making decisions. Uh, because with, with uh, decisions, we've made good ones and bad ones. And we hope, well, we're going to learn to make better decisions because of change. And uh, we want to be established in the faith, grounded in love. Uh, thinking and acting like mature people that God wants us to be. I said before that change is not change until you change, and so you may hope for change, pray for change, wish for change, believe for change, but until you change, and, and here's the question that I asked myself this week as I was thinking about this and God was speaking to me about change. Uh, Sort of my own question, or the question that I felt the Holy Spirit asked me was, what has caused you to change looking back over your life? And then I felt that God said, only two things, only two things in the whole world changes. Things that you gain or things that you lose. Other than that, your life remains the same. But when things come to you or things are taken away from you, you as a person change. If you have, if you have met somebody that you knew before and you meet them now and you say, you think to yourself, they have changed. If they have changed, that means something has been added to their life or something has been taken away from their life and thus they're different, or that they have changed. So it's the power, change is the power of loss or gain. Now, I think that I have a scale here this morning. I took a scale in, and on the scale is, the, is who we are, and uh, there's a, a weight to our life uh, and, and what we have, and uh, we can change the scale will change if, if I take something out. In other words, the, 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 it has lost something. Or I can change the scale and make it heavy by adding something to it. And uh, 
by a show of hands, how many people like good change? How many would like good things to be added to you, saying, well, I got this good gift, and I got this good thing, and, and this good thing came to me, and, and somebody gave me this, and, and, and I worked, and I got a promotion, and we had uh, children, and our children are a blessing. And, and, and so our weight is changing through good things that are happening to us. Now, how many people would line up for the opposite? How many people would line up for change through bad things? How many people say, I really need to change? But the thing is, is that we do change through good or bad. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death. So change is going to happen every time you add something to yourself or every time something is taken away. And if you look back at your own life, what has caused you, what has caused you, what has made you change? And so we're going to look at a scripture. Uh, hopefully I'll share something, some truth with you today. And, and I also uh, want to prophesy that I believe that some people are watching today that your life is going to be forever changed today by the revelation that you catch. I believe that the day of disaster is behind us, and, and your day of disaster, your day of bondage, your day of, uh, of captivity, your day of jail, your day, I, I believe that God has a word for you today. I prophesy over you today that today is going to be a day of freedom. Today is going to be a day of liberty. Today you're going to come into a new day, a new day. I declare it unto, the, unto you as unto the Lord, as the Lord speaking to my heart this week, that this is going to be a transformation moment for you today. And so I want to read from Joel chapter uh, 2 and verse 25 uh, to 27. It says, and, and, and so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust and the, cons the consuming locust and the chewing locust. My great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God you shall, who shall deal with wondrously with you and my people God's people shall never be put to shame then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel I am the Lord your God and there is no other my people shall never be put to shame and then in John 10 and 10 well, many people know this verse some people probably have it on your fridge and uh, for sure, it's a, it, it is a, 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 a popular verse, but I want you to catch some truth in it today. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And then Jesus speaking here, he said, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, we all face the, the need to change, and change is common. There, there is no systemic racist to change. Change doesn't just pick on one race, doesn't pick on one age group, doesn't pick on one gender, doesn't pick on social status. Change and the need to change and the fact that people change happens to all of us. And uh, there, in, in the world we live in, we, we feel that well, we can divide this group into this and divide that group, but change, change is universal. You are going to change. If you're going to live on planet Earth, you are going to change. And so it, it's not a matter of denying the fact of change and that, that, that the enemy will work to, to hurt you and God will work to help you because the greatest commodity on the earth is not gold or silver or precious metals and diamonds, the things that men find as treasures, but the greatest treasure on the planet is a human soul. Both the devil and God are in, are in war over your soul. And the devil will try to rob, kill, and destroy, and Jesus comes to bring you life and bring it more abundantly, and we stand as in the need for what God has for us. But are you willing, are you willing to allow God to change your life? And so uh, the Bible tells us to lay aside the sin and the weight, Hebrews, it tells us to lay aside the sin and the weight that so easily besets us. So Here's what I have here. I have some things. And in life, I, I got this measuring tape. And, and the measuring tape is, uh, do you measure up? Do you measure up to your friends? Do you measure up with your house? Do you measure up with the car you drive? And so the weight of that 
will change who you are. And if I look at the scale now, the scale went up, and now the person that gets this as a, a problem, that they got to measure up, that they got to be equal, they got to be, uh, and it's a weighty matter. And, and what happens is, is, is that uh, the person now is carrying that everywhere they go. And they look at, they look at somebody else's house, they look at somebody else's uh, spouse, they, they, they look at somebody else, and they say, you know, if I just had that, I'd be better. But you see, really what it is, it's a weight or a sin. The Bible says the sin and the weight that so easily besets us. Now, over here I have a bag of a whole bunch of stuff in it. And <clears throat> I was thinking, this is a separate thing. Because, because a, a sin comes in from two directions. Sin comes from what we do, and sin comes from what others do to us. And so this represents what other people have done to hurt you. We've all been hurt. Now, we all have our own issues, but we've all been hurt by somebody. We didn't make it happen. We didn't cause it to happen. Uh, if you were born into a family uh, where people are drug addicts or abusers or you were abused as a child, you didn't sign up for that. You didn't even do anything to deserve that. But so somebody else's weight, somebody else's sin is put upon you, and here you are now dealing not only with, with uh, your weight, the thing that was on you, but now you're dealing with the weight of somebody else that's on you. And some people can never get past a hurt because they can't unload the weight. And so uh, people that struggle with addiction, they will say, well, this happened to me and that happened to me and, and I was okay until this event and I was okay until my uncle did this or, 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 or my father or, or, or somebody close to me, they dumped on me. And, 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 and so now they have this weight of addiction and, and, and there it is, and <clears throat> they could, they're, they're physically carrying something, so, <clears throat> pardon me, I could, uh, I could pick them up and carry them, and I could say, okay, I'm going to carry you now, I'm going to lift you up, I'm going to help you, but am I helping you get rid of the problem, or am I helping you carry the problem? See, the, the great news of the gospel is not that I speak strength to you to carry the problem. I speak deliverance to you to get rid of the problem. And so in life, we have these things that happen to us and, and a physical problem uh, that we have. And uh, 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 just be strong. Just be strong and carry it. Oh, I just pray that you would have the strength to carry these burdens. Oh, I just... And, and so we, we, we think we're doing good, but it's not divine wisdom. It's not divine God. It's not a move of God. It's a move of you just saying, well, this must be a burden that the Lord has given you. Oh, this must be my sickness that i got to carry. Oh, this it, it, it doesn't line up with Scripture. It just lines up with uh, being nice to people. Uh, I, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to look too religious. I don't want to look too, too Jesus. But the truth is, and the truth will set you free, the, the truth is still the truth that you are carrying something that you don't need to carry, but thus you are carrying it. And when people try to carry you or strengthen you, they still haven't set you free. And so, oh, they say, well, just be strong for another week. Just, oh, and then you feel, oh, okay, I can carry this burden for another week. And you go another week and another week and another week. And, and, and the truth is, is that we're trying to cope with our sin instead of being delivered from our sin. We're, we're trying to adjust our life and say, well, you know, it's this, this is what it weighs, and, and, and i got to cut a bit of weight on me. Some people carry the whole weight of the world on their shoulder, and you're wondering, well, why are they doing that? Or, or, or why are they carrying this abuse now for 10 years? Or why are they carrying... Because it, the, the greatest burden that you can carry... It's not the day that you're in, but it's the pain of your past. Once you put the pain of your past on your shoulders, that is a heavier weight than the problems that are in today. Most people could say, well, today I'm not really, you know, things are pretty good. Things are, but yet, Oh, but 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, somebody hurt me, somebody did something to me, and you're still carrying it. It's still upon you. All somebody has to do is mention their name. Boom, there's the weight of it. And, it, and so it, it's one thing to build someone up to be stronger. It's another thing to cast your burdens upon the Lord. Someone says, well, pastor, you seem pretty burden-free. Oh, yeah, well, I've worked on my spiritual muscles, and <clears throat> I'm just stronger than other people. And so, No, the understanding is, is my burdens would have crushed me too. 
I have learned to cast all my care upon Jesus, for he careth for me. The secret of salvation is not getting someone to make me stronger to carry my sins. It's getting someone who delivers me from my sins. And, and uh, this, this, this pain, see, pain can be emotional, mental, or physical. But pain is an indicator that you've got a problem. If you have no pain, you may never realize that you're sick. In fact, silent killer is a sickness that gives you no pain. Some people are silently dying in sin because they don't, they don't care. They, 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 or, they, or they have it and they say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. That's just me. Oh, when somebody hurt me, they put that on me. And I guess this is, this is my lot in life. Uh, this is what I have to carry. Uh, I, I say thank God for pain because without pain, I wouldn't realize I need to change. So, so, so pain is an indicator that something's wrong. When you have pain in your marriage, there's something wrong within your marriage. When you have pain in the workplace, there's something wrong at the workplace. When you have pain, when you talk about your childhood, there's something that's wrong that happened in your, in, in your childhood. You need to know that pain is an indicator that you need to change. Instead of saying, well, it still bothers me. It's, there, there's a difference between uh, me carrying you and you carrying the problems you have. And so you, you need to know what the scripture says. And, and the great thing about pain is, is we start looking for help. We say, well, Lord, how can I, how can I get rid of this? So pain causes me to seek help. If, if uh, I'm running into, like if, if I have a problem, there's several people here today. So if I have a problem with Roly, and, and, then, and then I have a problem with Pastor Mark, and then I have a problem with Jed, and then I have a problem with Amy, uh, I was going to mention Eva too, but I never have a problem with her, and, and so we, uh, if I have a problem, but, but if I, ha- watch this now, the common denominator is me. If I have a problem with everybody, then everybody can't be wrong, but I'm carrying something that's causing me to reject those that are around me because I feel weighed down by the pain that's in me. And until I release or get rid of the pain in me, I'll never change because change happens because something comes to me that I grab a hold of that maybe I shouldn't be holding on to and my weight changes, my spiritual weight, my my sin load uh, changes and, and, and here I am now burdened and even before I meet somebody, I haven't figured out that they're not gonna like me and it's something in me that's causing me and, and so, so, so Joel here, he says, our problems are like locusts. He said, he said, he said locust, a locust is just a grasshopper. And I thought, well, a single locust then or a single grasshopper hopping around in your yard is probably a single problem. If somebody has a single problem, it's, it's probably not too bad. Uh, but when the locust hit, and it, it said here, uh, uh, the, the, the locust, uh, the, the, the swarming, so this is this, this, the swarming locusts. Now, I, I was interested. I, in Africa right now, today, they're having a problem. It says the worst problem in 70 years that the swarming locusts are going across the land. And it, they're consuming everything. I believe that once you get so much sin in you, you get concerned. It's one thing to be concerned about a problem. It's another thing to be consumed by the problem. And and so... so, so he, this, this uh, effect, this, this thing is, first of all, he said, the crawling locust. I thought about that. I thought, well, what about the crawling locust? Have you ever had a problem that gets under your skin? Ooh, it's a crawling locust. I thought, crawling locusts sometimes don't, don't uh, show up real quick. They kind of crawl in over time. You know, you look back five years ago, and it wasn't really a big problem, but today it's a crawled in over time. You thought that I could dump this off, I could get rid of this problem anytime, but it's crawled in. And I thought about addictions and things like medications and things, and we say, oh, well, we need that, and we put that in, and then we have the addictions, and we need a little more addiction in our life, and, and, and we get uh, doing drugs and, 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 and all that kind of stuff, and then, and then somebody comes along, and this is a, this is a knife, and, and somebody jabs you with it. Oh, they hurt me so bad, I'll never get over it. Well, why won't you ever get over it is because you're now carrying it. It's one thing for it to happen to you. It's another thing to become part of who you are. And so, so here we have this, this, this crawling locust, and then it says we have a consuming locust, and that's different than a 
concerning locusts. It means that the locust has taken over everything in your life. He's a consuming locust. He's just, every time somebody says hello, you say, well, I, I, I've been divorced. Or, it's a consuming thing. Or, 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 or I'm sick. Uh, whatever it is, this, this, this swarming locust has seemed to overtake you and has swarmed over you, and, and you've changed. And then the, the, the third thing it says here was it, it's a chewing locust gnawing at you. The question was asked, how do you eat a two-ton elephant? One bite at a time. The enemy will try to devour you. The enemy comes to devour you. He seeks whom he may devour, and he's willing to eat you and gnaw at you and chew at you and, and con- try to consume you. And, and, and what happens with this gnawing, uh, if it was nine and nine and nine and nine, after a while, you were identified by what ate you rather than being identified by who you are. You become, you, you, who you were and who you should be is gone, and who, is a, who has now appeared is the result of a messy locust fight. And, and, and the locust has, has come, and, and, and he creeped in, and he consumed you, and now he nod at you and at you. What did he say? What did Jesus say? He comes to rob, kill, and destroy. One thing I found out about the enemy. When the enemy gets to this place, he gives one thought to everybody he deals with. One, he has, he has, see, because he only has one agenda, so this is not really a heavy revelation for you to grasp. One thought the enemy has that he'll plant in everybody's mind when he gets to this place of a heavy weight on you and you can't carry it anymore and all the rest of it, you should kill yourself. Why? Because he's come to rob, kill, and destroy. He plants thoughts in your head that you'd be better off dead. And, and, and it's not just a one person. It's not just one person with an addiction. It's just not one... Everybody that has the problem feels the only way to escape it is to kill the vessel, to destroy the vessel. I'll kill myself. Everybody will be better off. All the world will be better off. Listen, God has the other side of it, has life and more abundantly. You don't have to pick death. You could pick life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Which do you pick? Whom will you serve? The, the, the understanding of service, some people say to me, well, I don't need anybody to control me. Uh, uh, God wants, you know, there's all this authority and God wants to control me. God wants to control you, yes, to lead you into life. But watch this. The devil wants to control you to lead you into death. B- both are paths. Both, the path of the Lord is righteous and truth. The path of the enemy is death and destruction. You choose this day whom you'll serve. But as for me and my house... Come on, somebody. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to pick God. And so we, we try to, uh, do you know any locust people? You know, Bob Locust and, and, and Johnny Locust and Mary Locust. And, uh, you don't want to hang around these people. And I thought, well, you know, locust people come and knock at your door. It's a little easier when they call now. We have call display, and it says Henry Locust. Now, I'm not going to answer Henry Locust because you know he's going to try to consume you. You know he's going to try to eat at you. You know he's going to try to bug you, and you're just going to say, I don't need this today. But the truth is, no matter what our need is, there is one that's higher than us, one that's better than us, one that's greater than us, that never grows weary of us coming to him. And in fact, he says, watch it, he says, cast all your care upon him, for he careth upon you. So I say there's some things that people have done to me. Yep, I have a past. I have people that hurt me. I have family members that hurt me. But I've hurt them. I've hurt other people. I can't say, well, you know, they hurt me. They sinned against me. No, I sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. I have put my care here and I care about this and care. what's happening to my scale what it keeps getting heavier and heavier and heavier and 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 oh god I can't take another ounce I can't take another straw heavier heavier why won't the devil leave me alone you know why the devil won't leave you alone you're not dead yet 
And he wants to rob, kill, and destroy. And he keeps adding and adding and adding until you are under this tremendous strain and this tremendous weight. And, and, and you feel the pain and you don't know what to do with the pain. And, and we need God here. This is the whole gospel message. I think that sometimes we need, at this point, even Christians can carry weight they shouldn't carry, carry burdens that they shouldn't carry. Uh, so so, so at, even, at, even at this point, we can say, well, God, help me. I, I believe that sometimes God puts his hand, he, he uses both hands. He puts, he puts one hand on our shoulder and says, strength, strength. He puts the other hand into our mouth and says, be quiet, be quiet. Because it, sometimes when we're hurting, we lash out and we say things we shouldn't say. We, we, he, 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 he's protecting us in both ways. He's given us strength, and he's saying, let me do it. Be still and know that I am God. Let me take care of this problem. Let me take, and, and so we have a, we have a, I have a question here for to, to ask you. This is all of us. This is all of us. And, and I could take this and I could say, I think I'll move it. Because this is what some people do. I think I'll move this to Ontario. I know what I need to do. I need to get away from all these problem people. I'm going to move to Ontario. You know, moving to Ontario doesn't change the weight of the problem. I've seen people involved in drugs, and they say, I'm going to move to Ontario, get away from all the drug people in this community. They get up in Ontario and say, what's going on? There's drug people up here too. And, and they, they can move to British Columbia. There's drug Why? Because you, the problem is not where you locate. The problem is what's located in you. And, and so when you're carrying these things, and these things are upon you, and those things are th that are weighing you down, and we all have sinned. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then it says, it, it's, it, it, I want to conclude with this. I'm quickly moving on here. The, here's the other thing that we do when we're, we're in this condition. We, we promise somebody we won't hurt them again. I'll never do that again. I, I promise. Have you ever promised somebody that you wouldn't do it again and you did it again and again? And you, you wonder, but I promised I wouldn't do it. I, I said I wouldn't do it. Why have I done it again? There's a weight. Lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us. When you feel strong enough to carry it, you promise I won't do it again. The second mistake that we make is we promise God even. Oh God, if you just get me out of this problem, I'll serve you. God, if, 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 uh, if you help me in this situation right now, I'm under all this weight. If you just help me right now, I'll go to church next week. Well, whenever we have church. But, but I'll go to church. I promise. I promise. God, please believe my promise. I promise you that I will do it. Your healing does not come through your promises. Your healing comes from believing the promises of God. The promises of God are the ones that count. My promises to God may be helpful, might be okay, might be a try, but my healing does not come because I promised God that I would do better, but by His stripes I've been healed. But the, the Isaiah 53 uh, tells us that He bore my sorrow. I, did, I didn't borrow your sorrow, me picking you up doesn't change the weight that's in you. Me carrying you to another location doesn't change the weight. But if you would accept Jesus Christ, if you would say, Lord, and this is what happens, I want you to see this, spiritually, Jesus says, I will come and lift your burdens. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, that at Calvary's cross, Jesus died, and he says, I want to take every burden that you carry. And suddenly, the weight has changed. Suddenly, what's upon you, you feel like, wow, this is a new day. All my burdens are lifted. All that pain I was carrying is gone. What happened to me? You were born again, born again by the Spirit of God. And so God is asking you, will you exchange? Will you exchange your weight, your pain, for his abundant life? Do you need a new day? Do you need a new day? And even for some Christians, because some Christians have the habit of taking something and saying, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saved, but, 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 but maybe I'm supposed to carry this. Well, God, did you really mean everything and everything? And God says, listen, 
Cast all your care upon me, for I care for you. And now the weight has changed. Now you're free. There's a difference between the power to visit you in jail and the power to have the key to set you free. I pray today that you would accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Yes, the locusts have come in all of our lives. I am not exempt from the swarming locusts of this world. But I have found an answer. I have found the, the good news that by asking Jesus to come into my heart, and God, I give you all my future, I give all my pain, I give all my past, I give everybody that hurt me, I give that to you, Lord. I give my divorce. I give my sickness. I give my disease. I give my childhood. God, what, what, you, you have your own list of stuff. You have your own list of pain. You have your own list of things that you're carrying. But the good news is, come on now, the good news, by the word of the Lord, if you will accept Jesus as your Savior, I prophesy over you today, you'll no longer carry it. No, you won't. You, will, you won't carry it because Jesus is carrying it for you. I believe that Jesus carries my every sin. My every sin. Every burden that so easily has beset me. So yes, there's some things I never wanted, but there's some things I accepted that I should never have accepted. God, I give it all to you. I asked Calvary's cross, Calvary's sacrifice, Calvary's blood that paid the price for me that you will accept that today and allow him who has already paid the price for you. He's asking you to give it. He's asking you to give it. Take all that weight that's on you and give it to him and you will be forever changed. Lord, I thank you for everyone listening today. Lord, I know last week when people are listening, I heard later and I talked to people that accepted you. So Lord, again today, I pray that those who are watching in this moment or in the moments to come, if they watch it later, people that do, I pray that salvation would come to their household and burdens are still lifted at Calvary. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing the time with me today and, and being a part of this. You are blessed and favored by the Lord. And may you walk in greatness this week. I prophesy over you that this will be a, a different week, a good week. You've done some stuff here. Even as Christians, we can unload some stuff. And I declare freedom over you this week. In Jesus' name, amen.